Sting, need I ask, how are you? I feel a lot better than I did yesterday when I had a very high fever and I couldn't get out of bed. But as you can probably hear, my voice is still um, not there. Yeah. It's, yeah. not, uh, it's not, not the voice that thrilled thousands. Yeah. And you're bitterly disappointed, obviously, at not being able to uh, work. <coughs> I'm absolutely depressed. I mean, purely selfishly as well. I want to come here and work. But I'm also very sorry for everybody who's bought a ticket and hasn't been able to see us. I, I really feel responsible. A lot of people have lost money, a lot of people have uh, been let down, and it's all because of this thing in here. I feel uh, sad about it. Is this the first time this sort of thing's happened? No, it's an occupational hazard with, us, with the singer. It happens about once every six months. You get a, you get a, a bug of some sort, and it goes straight for the, the weakest point, which is the throat. It can be just a cold, or like this was, a flu. And there's nothing you can do about it, because the, your, your voice is strained all the time, and working does it. And um, you just have to lay off for a few days. You know? Well, you know, many people think of you maybe wrongly as being the sort of figurehead of the band, and this sort of emphasizes the point in some ways, you know? Well, there's no show without punch, as they say. <laughs> but police without sting? There's no sting. Tell me, just, just as at one point, <coughs> often wondered the name Sting, where did it come from? Oh, the name Sting is very old. It's, it's about 10, 11 years old now. I used to play in a, a Dixieland jazz band in Newcastle, my hometown. And uh, I used to wear a pullover that was black and yellow hoops. And the trombone player decided I looked like a wasp. So they called me Sting. And the name stuck with me. My mother calls me Sting, so it's pretty official. The seat of approval. You know, with someone with a sort of a, a jazz background, how, how difficult is it to sort of be assimilated into the, uh, the rock scene? Um, it's not so much difficult as being useful. And that if you come from a different area of music and go into another one, you bring a different emphasis, a different uh, knowledge into it. I think one of the reasons the police are, are so successful at the moment is because we all, we all come from different areas. And we're a rock band, but we um, have different styles at our disposal. So we can do a lot of things. And I think that helps. If you've just been in a rock groups all your life, what do you know? But, the old cliches. I mean. Presumably before you did get in a rock band, you had preconceived ideas about rock music. Have I they didn't changed like much? rock music. Um, I've never been a rock music fan. I, I've always wanted to be a, a serious musician. I've never actually aspired to the position I'm in at the moment, which is a uh, pop star, I suppose is the word. I never wanted to be that. It's just happened by accident. Um, but now that I'm in it, now that we are a rock group, um, I feel it's an exciting um, medium to be in. I'm very concerned about pop. I think it's, it's, it's now in the hands of intelligent people. Whereas before, in the 70s, pop had became a, a, d a dirty word and you had uh, the industry just using it to make money and the, the pop stars we had were just plastic, manufactured. Now we've got sort of more intelligent the, the better musicians doing it, like like Costello, like Nick Lowe, um, Joe Jackson, The Police. These are, these are people who would have shunned pop yeah, 10 years ago. They would have been making albums. But now we're into making singles and making singles for a mass market. And I think that's healthy. It's still obviously um, a profit orientated <coughs> business, though. Oh, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not shunning uh, commercialism. If anything, I enjoy, I enjoy the game. It is a game. You um, you, put, you put something into the game and you get something out of it. And you look at the charts every week and it's like a league table, it's like football. I enjoy that, not not just for the, uh, the, the means for, for making money. I'm not that interested in making money, but I enjoy the, the fun of being on the charts, the fun of trying to beat the other groups. And in that sense, the commercialism of it, I like. And I also enjoy um, trying to figure out, when writing songs, what will sell. It's interesting too. What sort of song will sell to millions of people? It's interesting. 
Sting, I, I'd like to sit and talk here for quite a while, but I, I think it would be unfair, <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot for those few words, and I hope you make it in the Australian scene. I just, anyway. I just hope we can come back to New Zealand fully, fully voiced and uh, give people their money's worth next time. I'm really deeply sorry we couldn't do it this time. Look after yourself anyway. Bottoms up.